Okay, class, so here's the quiz on the chapters from the book. Um, please take whatever time you need. Obviously, this is an open book quiz. Um, fill in your answers, and you are going to be given a mechanism to submit them to me so I can grade them, um, which will be clear. Um, by the time you take this test, we don't have it set up yet, for which I apologize. Okay. Um, now, the test is done. We are now going to start on the first new module, which is prospecting with databases. Um, you recall there are three modules. The next one is uh, customer loyalty building with databases, and the third is uh, research. So, um, there are really two main ways that you use your database for prospecting. And the first is that you consult your database to find your NBCs, your best prospects, who spends the most and costs the least, <clears throat> the relationship customers versus transactional customers, as your book says. And then once you find them by looking at transactions over time and profits over time per customer, you are going to um, be appending external databases to them, et cetera, looking at their zip codes, all the kinds of things we've been talking about to try to find uh, additional demographic and psychographic information, hobbies, et cetera, of these people. Obviously, the better you understand them and can define them, the better you will be able to reach them with the right media, the better you will be able to talk to them in the right voice with the right meaningful things. The second way you use a database is that you can look for prospects with databases, but obviously not your own database, because your own database is full of customers, not prospects. So how do you find prospects in databases? You rent, otherwise access other people's databases. And you run emails, most likely against people in those databases that you think are going to match up with your NBCs. That, kind of in a nutshell, is what we're talking about here with prospecting with databases. So, um, you recall, let I me mean, just expand on the idea of um, defining what characteristics determine your best prospects. I'm just going to remind you of our famous database players that we saw there in class one day, um, holding up those cards. And you'll recall that the card on the right was purchase of uh, athletic shoes, and that the other four cards to the left were different variables that we all thought might have an impact or influence on athletic shoe purchase. And remember how we kind of, each one of the database players uh, kind of jiggled or moved their cards up and down. So, um, and then what you do in a multivariate analysis is exactly that. You, you're the computer um, looks for records, consumer records with either low or high values for whatever vari variable it is. So you look for really old people and really young people. And then you see if you see whether their likelihood to purchase moves when you either go up or down on the age spectrum. And the same with athleticism, same with male-female. You basically move each one of the variables and see if the sales variable moves. And the variable that moves the sales variable the most is your most important um, contributing factor to, you know, to buying, to being an MVC. And therefore, you're going to weight that variable more heavily in your media selection, et cetera. So if age is the big factor, uh, it's obviously going to be younger people. Probably you're going to choose media that reach younger people, and that's going to be your first, um, the first thing you look for in media. You don't want media that reach older people. You just want younger, et cetera. So hopefully that's clear. <clears throat> and in this way, as you can see, the little guy there fishing, um, you're fishing for the big fish. You're fishing, you know where to find them, right? You know how to find them, hopefully, and how to catch them. And your prospecting then is focusing on the biggest opportunities. 
Now, how do we use databases to find prospects? Well, um, the best way to use databases to find prospects, and I can see that my slides are. Okay, hope that's better. All right, as I said before, you're going to rent databases. Um, you're probably going to take a chunk of the of, of the rental file, you're going to compare it to your own file, or you're probably going to have to hire a, some kind of list company or Axiom to do the comparison for you. It's not very expensive, a couple thousand dollars maybe at the most. And you do a run and see how many new customers there are in the database, first of all. <clears throat> and these are some sources of databases. Uh, you can see here magazine subscriptions. Uh, club memberships, um, all kinds of um, um, types of databases that you can get. And um, the link to the website here, which should be in the folder or somehow linked to this slide, um, it just takes you to a, a magazine, a, a company that rents subscription lists, different kinds of magazines, business magazines consumer magazines, etc. That's obviously another kind of list you can rent. There are lots of lists, and then there are list brokers also that can help you find lists that, that manage and work with lots of different types of lists. So that is, uh, again, pretty quickly, uh, a little review of how databases are involved in prospecting. And I think it bears mentioning here just to kind of give us a bit of a broader perspective on our overall marketing plan, because the database marketing is obviously just a part of our overall plan. Um, we're also buying advertising to find new customers. That is the reason to buy advertising. Uh, often most of a marketing budget or a large percentage of a marketing budget will go into advertising. It's the sexy fun stuff. And it's all about acquiring new customers. And again, you want to find media that are going to target your MBCs. And um, you're going to be doing analysis based on how many new customers you get from different media, uh, provided you can measure it. Hopefully you can. Obviously, if it's Internet, you can. <clears throat> if there's a code they use when they call in to order, you can. Um, you can't always measure exactly what each, what each um, media buy you make delivers. But you're going to analyze cost per customer, how much did you spend on the media. And if you're a sophisticated database marketer, as you guys are going to be, you're going to look at lifetime value of the customer, not just the one transaction. So even though you spent, say, $100 uh, to acquire one new customer, um, and the customer only spends um, $50, well, the lifetime value of the customer provided particularly it's an NBC, is going to be several hundred dollars, which means you're going to make money on the $100 investment. <clears throat> also, it's important to note that in any prospecting effort, the sooner you can get your mitts on the prospect's email address, the better off you are. And obviously, if you're renting a list, you're looking for a list that has emails. Um, otherwise, it's kind of silly. Uh, you don't want to spend money on doing a big um, printed mailing to people. Uh, you want emails. So these are um, just examples or ways to um, get emails as quickly as possible. Um, and the link is actually to a Publishers Clearinghouse commercial. And those of you who ha who've had me uh, the prior semester know that uh, Jason John, the CMO from Publishers Clearinghouse came in to lecture us. He's very interesting. He's got a great background in internet marketing. And the whole reason Publishers Clearinghouse runs those multi $5 million giveaways is very simple. Um, you have to write down your information, including your email address, on your entry form. And the entry forms go into the database and Publishers Clearinghouse markets and sells things to the database. So giving away, I think they give away something like I, I, he told us in class it was $40 million a year. I mean, it was a lot of money, $30 million. But, again, uh, more than pays off because they get the emails. But there are just different ways to get email addresses that are listed. And I think I pulled that from your book. 
So uh, takeaway thoughts on using databases for prospecting. Uh, and this does come out of the end of the chapter on prospecting. Um, more than 40,000 lists there. Um, they talk about response lists and compiled names. Obviously, response lists are people who bought something. Um, and they're probably going to be, be, be a better list for you. Um, and so you can just read through all these things yourself, <clears throat> merge purging, etc. And then finally, um, for B2B, your segmenting, as you may recall, is going to be based, the first take is going to be based probably on the type of industry the customer's in. And that's going to be based on SIC code, standard industrial classification code. So are they, uh, are they a lumber company? Are they making pencils? Are they making toothpaste? Um, so, um, just take a moment and read through this information. And that'll be great. And so, now we have finished the module on um, prospecting. So, we now have a quiz on prospecting, and it's a multiple choice. You've got two questions here. And just take a few minutes and um, if you need to go back and look at a slide or two you can um, but I want you to uh, pick the right answer and submit and then when you're done we will go on to the next module which is loyalty building using databases <laughs>